And you also mentioned the higher self as something that was part of you and also separate. Mm -hmm. And I've always been curious about what the higher self really is, because to me, I've been thinking that my soul is sort of my highest identity or or, Mm -hmm. uh, soul essence. Uh, And then I've been curious whether the higher self is even more evolved. But what is really the higher self is that maybe... um, maybe a higher self can be several souls together or is it only your soul? I, that's a great question. And to be honest, do we really know the answer? Uh, because again, I think this is like that drop in the bucket versus the entire ocean. So as I understand it from my experience, the higher self or the higher soul is like the wholeness of your being. And so if you look at it like a pie, right? Like that is your soul, your higher self is the whole pie. And then the pie is split up into hundreds or thousands of different slices, which come down as a slice for an experience somewhere. And maybe there's several slices going in different dimensional times and spaces, parallel realities, you name it, always coming back to that central soul self, right? And so that central soul self is essentially the higher self. And what was interesting is when I was talking to my higher self, though, my higher self showed itself, (laughs) sounds funny, um, but as me. And so I had long, dark hair, looked very similar to what I do now, but I knew that I was looking at my higher self, but I also knew my perspective as my higher self looking at me over there. So I was both at the same time, but also recognizing the difference. So again, hard to explain in human form, but I felt how much my higher self absolutely loved my incarnation. And when I could feel that as me watching my higher self, I was like, wow, do we ever value this experience right now? And that's when I really learned how much like free will is valued as a human being. Like our ability to choose in any moment is our absolute greatest gift. And that doesn't mean we get to choose the perfection in every moment, but we get to choose the reaction at any moment. And so we can have something really horrible happen and we can choose to take that and learn from it and grow from it and choose something better because of it, or we can choose to not, but that's always that free will piece. And we don't realize how much that matters in the way our life paths go and our destiny unfolds because You know, when we're creating that blueprint with our guides, like I was doing on that last part of my life here, um, with the instruction and, you know, conversation with my guides, I was able to pick the best things that my soul may benefit from moving forward. And we do that before we come into a life. But then it is our human self that through free will choices, chooses how we sort of maneuver those destiny pieces we put in. And so for me... Being able to take out the chronic illness and not have chronic illness be a big figure in my life anymore, I had finished the lessons that I hoped to gain from chronic illness. And one of those was surrender because I was someone that came into life who wanted to do everything myself and I didn't need help. And being chronically ill basically chipped that away from me to the point of having to rely on everybody in my family to help me get through And I learned surrender and I learned peace in that surrender. And I learned compassion for those that feel limited in many different ways. And so once that lesson's complete, that piece of destiny has been completed. And so we either can fight the destiny or we can dive into the destiny and see why is it there? What am I learning from it? And not all of those destiny points are challenging negative ones either. Some are really good things. So our free will choice, when we choose to really embrace the experiences we're having, having, no, having and learn from them, we then can move through with more ease and grace, with less like wild card moments. It's, it's amazing to see that. And so I really learned that from that experience with my counsel and my higher self. You actually sort of answered my question, my next question now, uh, because... Sometimes I hear uh, people that go to our courses or people who reach out that says that, you know, I've tried this course, I've tried that course, and is there no use or is there any use to start another course? Because I feel 
I'm always failing. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel I want to get healthy. I want to create a beautiful partnership or I want to have this job or I want to have a child or whatever they want to manifest. And then they're saying, but it, it's never working. I cannot seem to change it. And my heart goes out to them, you know, um, and that is sort of part of the mystery that some people just go through it and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it, everything falls into place while other people are sort of struggling and struggling and don't understand when people like you are just saying, you know, all of a sudden it was just resolved. And what would you say to those? Uh, would you say, I mean, you sort of answered it, that the blueprint is still, you know, so uh, specific and that they chose this. So even though they sort of want to get out of it and manifest, you know, what they long for, mm -hmm. they're not done with their learning yet. I think that's a really good general answer. Like if it's not leaving you, then usually there's something else that's still left to learn. And I know through various phases in my journey, I did womb healing. I did, you know, trauma healing from anything that maybe is holding itself in my womb space and ancestral healing. And I, I did all the things. And every time I would say, okay, I've done it all. I'm done. I did it all. Why is this still happening? And sometimes we think we're done, but there's more because oftentimes with those repetitive issues in our lives, there's many layers. So I would keep leaning into it until you get to the very bottom of it. There's something in there. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, though, sometimes repeated patterns are still happening because we haven't made the choices to actually change something. So sometimes that can be like a, a sort of thing of analysis paralysis, where we're willing to analyze and do all the things but not actually change something. So I would, again, I would lean into it. Is there an action step you're needing to take? Or is there another lesson that is still needing to be learned in it? To watch the full video, click the link below and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel.